Rug Rug Umar Khan is your new heavyweight champion. All right, welcome everyone to another episode, episode two of the Roger Sand Show, One Championship and MMA podcast. So One Championship 169 happened last night, and we've got a lot of things to talk about, starting, of course, with Rug Rug Umar Khan defeating the undefeated Anatoly Malikin. And I will be the first to admit I got it wrong. I predicted that Anatoly Malikin would win. He did not. I did not see it coming. I underestimated, and of course, Malikin underestimated Rug Rug. So what actually happened? How did I get this wrong? How did Malikin get this wrong? This was a very focused, a very intense Rug Rug who had a game plan and he stuck with that game plan. And his game plan was to be on the defensive and counter punch with his heavy fists. What Malikin found out last night was just how tough Rug Rug was. In another video, the thumbnail, I said Rug Rug was the African rhino because he really does have rhino skin. Malikin hit Rug Rug in the chin quite a few times during the match. It knocked Rug Rug's head back, but it did not phase him. It did not slow him down. He can take damage. Malikin had called Rug Rug a bodybuilder, and that's what Rug Rug is, a bodybuilder with the wrestling background who is doing MMA, and it turns out he's winning matches. Now let's talk about some of the things that happened in that match. Number one, Malikin getting a yellow card for grabbing the ropes after being warned by Herb Dean. What happened was Rug Rug was taking Malikin down, doing a suplex, and Malikin grabbed onto the ropes and kind of prevented a takedown. Who knows what would have happened there. Rug Rug also got warnings from Herb Dean for grabbing inside the glove, but what happened the most and what was most frustrating for fans was just the slowness of the match, the, the inactivity. Malkin would shoot for a takedown into the corner and just post up against Rug Rug, and neither fighter would really do anything significant to improve the position or put some damage. I mean, they'd knee, they'd get underhooks, but really Herb Dean had to separate them like 10 times from that position. And it got super annoying. The fans were booing. Overall, it actually wasn't a very good match. It was not entertaining at all. And that's what we're here for. That's why we're watching one. We want an entertaining match and we didn't get it. There were some okay moments where they both threw punches. Seeing Malikin get taken down by Rug Rug and thrown, that was cool because you know Malikin's undefeated Russian national wrestling team, very good grappler, but to see Rug Rug's takedown defense was good. I just didn't want to see it 10 different times and have the fight stopped so that they could go back to the standing position only to return to that corner. So not a great match overall, not entertaining, but we still got an upset, which in itself is kind of entertaining. So let me first try to make the case for why two judges gave it to Rug Rug and then why one judge gave it to Malikin. For why two judges called it in favor of Rug Rug. And I'm, I'm very curious to hear what other people thought about this, so leave a comment down below. But in my opinion, the judges looked at the takedowns and the control that Rugrug had in the first round with his wrestling and grappling against Malikin. They also saw he threw some good counter punches when the fighters were actually punching and not just hugging in the center of the ring or in the corner. And they did see that, I think it was in the fourth Maybe it was in the fifth round where Rug Rug got a punch off. I believe it was a counter punch against Malikin. Malikin looked like he tripped, but to some people it may have looked like he was knocked down. It, it, it was definitely a hard punch because Rug Rug throws hard punches, but it made it look like Malikin was knocked down and Rug Rug was then able to get a little bit of top control and show some control on the ground with wrestling versus what most of the match was, which was just 
pinned up against a corner for either of them. So that's why I think the two judges called it in favor of Ruger. Now, why did one judge call it in favor of Malikin? Well, if we go back and look, Malikin probably landed more significant strikes, especially to the head, which is where you're going to get more damage. So while Malikin, yes, was taken down in the first round, throughout rounds two, three, four, and, and five, Malikin was throwing good headshots like he said he would. So that's why I could see why one judge called it in favor of Malikin. So that's why the judges called Rug Rug the winner and Malikin the loser. But the actual loser in all of that was the fans who had to sit through 25 minutes of that, who had to watch Herb Dean separate them 10 different times at least and see a yellow card and see uh, you know the warnings issued and just pushing the, pushing each other against the cage that at one point they were kind of in the in the center you know holding hands it was just it was not the excitement that i had hoped it to be and i think the fans in bangkok expressed that opinion too let me know what you thought malikin i think will want a rematch we didn't hear from him after the fight at least i haven't seen anything maybe buchecha will get a rematch against rogue for the title but yeah, overall, this match, well, an upset was not that great to watch. And I'm happy it didn't come to Atlanta because I think the American fans would not have liked that. Just like the Thai fans. All right, what else happened at 1169? Did I get any of my predictions right? Well, yes and no. All right, Danny King Ad versus Adriano Marias. I got that one wrong as well. This was a repeat of what had happened a couple years earlier where Adriano Marias got the submission. Uh, and, and this was in round two. Marias, Marias for a 36-year-old looked very on point. King Ad also looked good. He was doing good grappling, throwing good strikes, but he just made a mistake, gave up his neck, and Adriano Marias was able to submit him. Now, I do got to take a victory lap, of course, because I did get two predictions right. Cade Rotolo defeated Ahmed Muchtaba. That was very impressive. A power right. Rotolo threw a power right hand, got Muchtaba on the ground, did some very fast ground and pound, and then went for the submission and got it in round one. Also, Marcus Buchecha defeated Amir Ali Akbari. As I predicted, it came down to Buchecha's Brazilian jiu-jitsu, and he got a rear naked choke on the Greco-Roman wrestler Ali Akbari. That was a great game plan because Akbari is very top-heavy, very strong, big chest, big arms, can throw hard punches, but on the feet and on the ground, that's where you get a more level playing field, and that's where Buchecha got his victory. He took almost no damage, and I think he's going to be back in the ring very soon. And for the Rod Tang Jacob Smith <laughs> do-over rematch, whatever you want to call it, yep, Rod Tang won again. This time, I wish he got a knockout. He was just kind of doing showmanship, playing around in the ring. He kissed Jacob Smith. He kissed the referee, Olivier Cost. It was entertaining, but I wanted to see a knockout. Smith was disappointed in his performance. I was too, given how confident he seemed and how confident he came off during the press conferences and the buildup and lead up to this fight. I really wish he would have put out a lot more and just thrown caution to the wind. You look at Jacob Smith, you see how physically fit the dude is he has so much energy in him, but he didn't use any of it. I mean, he used some, but Rod Tang was just playing with him. And I guess, and to be honest, the ver their first matchup was a lot more entertaining this, than this one. But let's talk about some of the news, some of the matches that are on the horizon in one championship, because there's a lot more that's going on. First, the Christian Lee Abeleg Rasulov matchup has been moved to one fight night 26. In December, that's December 7th in Thailand and December 6th in the USA. That one is for the light heavyweight MMA World Championship. That's going to be a good matchup. Not going to be anything like Malik and versus Rug Rug. These guys are going to go at it. I think we're going to see wrestling. I think we're going to see striking. Um, we're going to see it all. Rasulov will probably be more wrestle heavy in the matchup, but Lee is very smart and will kick like Malikin didn't. And unlike Malikin, Lee is going to actually throw everything he has. Malikin barely kicked at all in that match. Lee is going to use every weapon he's got. 
Also at one Fight Night 26, this match I'm very excited for. Shamil Gasanov versus Halil Amir in featherweight MMA. Gasanov is ranked fourth in that division. And if he wins, I think he's got a very good shot at Tang Kai for the championship belt. Halil Amir, on the other hand, also very good. In his most recent match, Akbar Abdullayev defeated him, knocked him out. But I think the style of Gasanov is actually going to suit Amir because Abdullayev, very powerful striker, just knocks people out, punches them to death. Gasanov, striker, but also a wrestler. Amir, also a wrestler. This, this should be good. Maybe their wrestling will like cancel each other out and they'll just go for striking. I could, I'm predicting that this match may steal the show. Also on that card, Dennis Purich makes his return after his loss to Rod Tang. He will be fighting Elias Mamoudi. Purich is five foot four. Mamoudi is five foot ten. So you, if you like these height difference matches like I do, this one should be good. Mahmoudi's nickname is the Sniper, and that's because he's got that long range and can knock you out from a distance. But Dennis Purich is a brawler out there. He's gone against Rod Tang. He's defeated Jacob Smith. You know, he's very experienced against the fighters and won. That one should be a great Muay Thai match. But actually, there is so much to get to. I'm going to try to keep this more MMA focused and maybe do another Muay Thai one later. But the big news Bantamweight MMA World Championship in January. Fabricio Wonderboy Andrade facing Pretty Boy Quan Wan Il. And guess what? Your boy actually called for this on Reddit three months ago. I posted um, that Andrade needed to fight Quan Wan Il in a rematch. Quan Wan Il has just been tearing up that division. Andrade has not been active in MMA recently in one. So this kind of needs to happen. He needs to defend his belt. Who better than Quan Wan Il? The bantamweight MMA division and the Muay Thai division are so stacked in one that one really needs to make these make more of these fights. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to that one. That's going to be absolutely crazy. That could actually be its own headliner. Instead of throwing it on the one, 170 card, where you've already got Tawan Chai, Superban, Superlek versus Nico Carrillo. You've got Sexan versus Soliu. I mean... It's crazy that they're throwing that on there, but I, I guess they need an MMA match. But right, that one should be fantastic to watch. Andrade has not fought MMA since he fought Lineker back in February 2023, so almost, almost a year ago. Let's see if he's got any cobwebs. So that is my news wrap up for one championship, mostly focused on MMA. We'll get another Muay Thai one in there. Thanks, everyone. Recently, the channel's gotten a lot more subscribers. Appreciate it. Continue to subscribe and like these videos, and I'm going to pump out more content just like I pumped the jab.